Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Let's Paint a Mini. So let's finish up that Fallout board game because we're down to the last miniature right now. We've got the uh, the Vault Dweller, I believe is his name. And I figured that we would try to do a color scheme that's actually pretty similar to the box art for the board game. So we're going to do kind of a, uh, a blue with some like kind of earthy colors. So some like blues and browns and tans and that kind of thing. So the very first thing that I like to start with with all my miniatures, as I'm sure you know by now if you've seen uh, most of my videos before, is I like to start with all of the uh, uh, skin bits, uh, just because I like to start with the like sort of deepest layers of the miniature, which usually is going to be uh, the skin. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to imagine that this particular um, guy, this vault dweller here, well, he was uh, born and raised in uh, an underground vault. So he hasn't been around a lot of sunlight, he hasn't really been on the surface very much, or if he has had any exposure to UV light, it's probably not very much, so I imagine him being a little bit more pale. You know what, I don't have my little plastic surface right here, so let me grab that. There we go, that's what I was looking for. Okay, so, uh, back to what we were doing. I'm gonna start with Fair Shadow. It's, uh, it's not quite as, as dark as just regular tan skin, and it's not as light as, uh, you know, Fair Skin. Um... A little bit darker, but we're going to use this as a base uh, for all of his skin. So I'm just going to use a, a medium uh, Reaper round brush here to get us going. And I'm going to start with the face, just because I always like to start with the face. And we'll go from there. Oh, and then as, as I'm sure you uh, have noticed, uh, you'll probably be pretty used to it if you've seen a lot of my videos in the past. But I did start with the, uh, a base coat of black. I just used a black primer and I just uh, sprayed him down. And that's what I've got to start with. Getting his little ears. He's got ears. So one thing that I like to do is I like to do eyes on uh, on my miniatures. Uh, they're not for everybody. Sometimes the eyes are just a little bit too much for, for some people to handle, even, even expert painters. Or not even necessarily too much to handle. It's just more hassle than they want to deal with, which is totally fine. That's perfectly fine. I like to, to do the eyes just because it's a little bit of a challenge. So whenever I do the eyes, I always actually just leave them uh, black. And then when I go over the eyes themselves with the, you know, that, that white, uh, you know, for the whites of their eyes, um, I'll, it'll leave a little tiny bit of a little, little bit of a black ring around their eyes. My brother makes fun of it. He calls it guy liner. <laughs> Uh, because you know all of all of my miniatures have have that little black ring around it, but I I like it because uh, it just makes them look a little bit less bug-eyed. Uh, having that little black ring kind of separating uh, their eyes from uh, from their skin uh, just kind of helps to bring out their eyes a little bit more, makes them a little bit brighter. So that's just a, a personal thing that uh, that I like to do. All right, and he's got really short hair, so he's got uh, his neck showing around the back side of his head here. And having no mouth and just having his uh, his black eyes there, he kind of looks like the, uh, the guitarist from Slipknot. <laughs> I forget his name. He's a good guitar player, though. Uh, I like, uh, well, okay, I, sh I should say I like Slipknot. I used to like Slipknot a lot, and it's not, you know, I, I don't think that they, like, sold out at any point or anything like that, but I just, I don't know, I, as I just got a little bit older, I kind of got out of him a little bit. Um... But yeah, okay, so that's it for the base coat. Oh no, just kidding. Sorry, I forgot that he's got, um... He's kind of wearing gloves. He's wearing fingerless gloves, I think. So he's actually got, uh, some, some fingers, uh, going, uh, coming from, uh, his... His gloves here. So we're just gonna grab those really quickly. All right, and that'll do. And I don't think that he's got any other uh, real skin bits uh, showing there. So I've got that brush rinsed off. All right, and I'm going to let him dry. Normally what I'll do is, uh, while that's drying, I'll try to move on to some other uh, uh, aspect of the miniature, but I really do want to finish up the skin first. So I'm going to let that dry first. Give that just a couple of minutes. All right, and then after uh, those, uh, those skin bits are totally dry, I'm going to move on to a fair highlight. It's basically the same uh, kind of like coloration, but it's just a much lighter shade. And we're going to use that to highlight all of the skin bits that we just did. And then I'll give a little bit of depth, a uh, little bit of uh, uh, color variety 
in this miniature. I'm using a, a small size Citadel dry, dry brush. Uh, make sure that when you're doing dry brushing that uh, that you're using a, a brush that's specific, specifically made for dry brushing. Uh, because it just kind of helps to uh, increase the longevity of your brush. Also just makes the, the entire process a little bit easier. So for, for dry brushing, what I'm doing here is I'm loading up a bunch of paint onto my brush, but I'm actually wiping off most of it. Uh, that's why, you know, I'm just kind of really lightly, just kind of, you know, dabbing, li little lightly, little lightly, just dabbing my, my uh, brush into, the, into my little paint puddle here, and I'm just wiping off a lot of it. Now you can see that I've got a lot of paint loaded up onto that brush, but it's such a small amount that it's almost dry. And that's why they call it dry brushing. So now we're just gonna go ahead and go over all of the skin bits that we just did with this fair highlight color. And that should bring a little bit of depth uh, to to his skin, to his face his, and his fingers and all that good stuff. Don't be uh, very concerned about getting a little bit of this paint onto anything else. Uh, you'll probably be fine. So like right here, you can see that I'm getting some, some paint on his hairline. That's fine, don't worry about it because we're gonna go over his hairline uh, with a different color here soon. So yeah, don't don't worry about doing anything super super finesse. Uh, don't worry about any 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 really 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 fine details or anything like that, because uh, we'll take it as we go. The reason why we start with all the deepest layers of the miniature is because it's easier, excuse me, to dry brush uh, deep layers and then deal with top layers uh, afterward. So it's going to be a lot easier to. Uh, um, dry brush the skin and uh, have that completely done and then do the hair than it would be to do the hair and dry brush the hair and then try to mess with the skin afterward because if you mess with the skin afterward if you dry brush the skin like what you're doing right now you're going to get some, some paint onto that hairline and you don't want that so yeah always try to start with, with the deepest layers of the miniatures the, the lowest contours of your miniatures Uh, so it was about a week ago, about a week and a half uh, at time of recording for this video, that uh, they announced Fallout 76. Now, as you would probably know from the previous videos that I've recorded for all these Fallout miniatures, I know nothing about Fallout. I have not played a single Fallout game. I don't know anything about the lore or anything like that. Um, yeah, so I don't know nothing. I don't know what Fallout 76 is supposed to be. Then again, a lot of people don't really know what Fallout 76 is supposed to be. Uh, but E3's coming up, and they're probably going to elaborate on some of that uh, in a little bit here. Okay, there we go. He, Yeah, he's really pale, actually. <laughs> oh, you know, I didn't get the back of his neck. That's okay. That, that'll be fine. Okay. He's looking a little vampiric right now, but I think that's okay. All right. So after we finish that up, what I think that we're going to uh, start with is uh, the, the blue of his, his jumpsuit. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a sort of a darker uh, blue color and we're going to work our way out with a lighter color. So what I'm going to start with is a sapphire blue. It's a nice just regular old blue color, but it's a little bit darker. And we're going to use this as a base and then we're going to dry brush with a lighter blue color over it. We're going to use like a sky blue color. And that'll give it a nice sort of, um, yeah, just, just nice, nice blue color. That's what we're looking for. All right, so I'll just go back to that one um, uh, medium brush that I was using. And uh, yeah, basically everything uh, jumpsuit wise, we're gonna go ahead and get. Now he's got a lot of uh, a lot of belts, a lot of straps, armor pieces, and all sorts of things sort of like scavenged onto a suit. Uh, if you can help it, try to go around it, but also don't be really concerned if uh, if you get a little bit of blue onto those belts and that kind of thing, because we are gonna go over those with another color. I always like to say though, you know, just for the sake of practice, for the sake of kind of uh, working on your details and all that good stuff. Um, you know, try to uh, uh, not get paint on the things that you don't intend to paint with this blue color. Again, not going to be a big deal if you don't, but, it, but just for the sake of practice, it's nice to get uh, nice to get some practice in. So yeah, we're going to do everything on his jumpsuit here with this uh, sapphire blue color. Oh, but I, like I was talking about, I was talking about Fallout 76 a minute ago. Um... Like I said, I've never played any Fallout game uh, really at all, ever. However, um, oh, you know what? Now that I'm looking at it, I feel like maybe his elbow here is supposed to be kind of skin colored. That's okay. Let's just go ahead and go over that with blue and we'll just uh, kind of assume that he's, yeah, like I said, it's just a full skin tight kind of blue jumpsuit. That's okay. Yeah, it'll be fine. Sometimes when you're painting miniatures, you just got to make executive decisions like that. 
and you'll be fine. But anyway, yeah, I was talking about Fallout 76. Um, I don't know what kind of game it's going to be. Uh, I feel like I need to give Fallout a try as a franchise because it, it really does seem to have a pretty passionate following full of cool, good people and all that, and it's got, uh, you know, an, a neat sort of premise and all that. So maybe I'll give Fallout a chance. I've heard from a few people that a really good one to start with is actually Fallout New Vegas, uh, because it's not quite as big, but also I, ju I guess just a lot of the um, the quests and a lot of the uh, uh, game design aspects and all that are, are actually very creative and very well done. Um, so I might give uh, Fallout New Vegas a try, but depending on what um, Fallout seventy six is, um, I might pick. I, I, you know, I might pick it up. I might give it a shot. Um, I really feel like I, I owe it to Bethesda because of what they've done with uh, with Doom and all of the uh, id properties, uh, because I'm a really, really big fan of, of id software and uh, all of all of their all of their shooters, all of all of that kind of thing. And so uh, I, I'm, I'm thankful for Bethesda for being able to present us with uh, uh, with Doom and, and Rage uh, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I, I, I kind of want to. Uh, um, tip my hat to uh, Bethesda a little bit and maybe maybe play some of their actual games a little bit. Uh, but again, it depends. I'm not a big like multiplayer gamer, so uh, there there have been a lot of speculation, a lot of like rumors going around about what Fallout 76 even is. Um, if it's going to be like a big multiplayer survival thing, or if it's going to be uh, something or other, I, I probably won't bother with that if that's the case but if it's like another you know just um uh single player campaign story thing i'll probably give it a shot yeah he's coming along so far he's starting to uh to take shape kind of starting to get a color scheme down here Oh, one last thing that I do want to mention about that one Fallout 76 teaser. Uh, there was a cover song uh, that they played for that uh, for that trailer that I really, really liked. It was a cover of uh, the John Denver song, Take Me Home, Country Road. I never really, I, I, I've never really gotten into John Denver or anything like that, but uh, in the past couple of years, there have been some movies that have uh, kind of had John Denver, that song especially, kind of like front and center almost with their plots. Uh, one was Alien Covenant. Uh, they heard somebody singing "Take Me Home, Country Road" on the uh, on the transmission that they got, and that's what got them to investigate the uh, the planet that they ended up going to. And then the other one was um, Kingsman: The Golden Circle. It was like one of Merlin's uh, favorite songs, or something like that. And uh, so he was singing that uh, at one point in the movie, and. Um, yeah, and then and so anyway, for for Fallout seventy six, there's there's some sort of band that's uh, doing a cover of it, uh, and I really really liked the cover a lot. Uh, if anybody knows who did it or how I can uh, be able to buy that uh, that song somewhere, I sure would like to do that because I, I really liked it a lot. Uh, yeah, very nice cover of uh, "Take Me Home, Country Road" by John Denver. Uh, speaking of music that I like, they also uh, recently either announced or they're either released or are about to release uh, the soundtrack to Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus. I like that game a lot, uh, and I really like the music for it a lot. I believe that Mick Gordon uh, did most of the music for it, and that's the same guy that did the soundtrack for uh, Doom 2016, which I am very, very fond of. I used it in, uh, I've used it in videos and stuff before for like all of my doom uh miniature painting videos as well as like uh all sorts of just doom videos in general i've used uh songs from the soundtrack um but yeah i guess that they're uh like i said either about to release or have already released the soundtrack to wolfenstein 2 the new colossus same guy who did the music for doom uh, i fully intend to buy it uh, as soon as it becomes available i will buy it because i did buy the soundtrack to doom um yeah excellent excellent work uh mick gordon and uh, all of the producers involved and all of all of that uh really really liked it a lot i do fully intend to uh, to buy that soundtrack so yeah if you uh if you like the soundtrack to doom or you liked the soundtrack to wolfenstein 2 apparently that's uh available for for purchase it probably will be available for purchase by the time i post this video so check it out definitely okay and i think that that's pretty much all of the blue uh that i can get there that's looking pretty solid 
All right, so I'll go ahead and let that dry before I move on to anything else. All right, and the next thing that we're gonna do once we have that nice and dried is we're gonna go over that with a lighter shade of blue. So I've got a, a faded off label here, but this is sky blue. This is just a very, very light blue color. Nice, nice, obviously, well, obviously sky blue color. Uh, and this is going to be a good color to dry brush the jumpsuit with, I believe. So I'm getting out a little bit of paint there and I will go back to my dry brush and we're gonna do the same dry brushing technique that we did with the skin uh, with the jumpsuit. But yeah, just loading up paint onto this brush here and wiping off most of it. All right, and then uh, let's start with the pant leg here because it's uh, it's pretty prominent. There we go, that's just bringing out some, some blue on his pants, well, just on his jumpsuit in general. And it's looking real nice. It's bringing out a lot of color, a lot of depth, and it's nice and bright. I really like that a lot. All right, and I think that we're about finished up with uh, dry brushing all of the blue here. This is a very nice color scheme. I like it quite a bit. Yeah, that looks nice. Okay. Yeah, I'll go ahead and rinse that brush off. All right, and I think that the next thing that I'm going to do is he's got a lot of metal uh, just kind of like uh, salvaged around. He's got uh, uh, kind, of a, kind of a kneecap here, and he's got a big shoulder pad. Well, he's got two shoulder pads, two different kinds looking here, it looks like. Uh, and as well as the firearm itself, we got uh, some metal. So let's move on to uh, uh, some honed steel. This is just a really great, um, you know, dark uh, silver, you know, steel color. And so we're going to use that. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use... Um, eh, let's, let's use... Okay, so let's go back to that medium uh, round brush that we were using. And let's, uh, let's get all the, the rifle parts. Let's just really lightly dab all of the parts of the rifle that uh, that have the the actual um, barrel showing. The rifle itself here too, you can kind of tell is kind of wrapped up in uh, some some straps, uh, some some kind of uh, um, grip texture stuff, I guess. Uh, so we just want to make sure to try to go around that if possible, because we're gonna use probably some some brown for that there we go that'll do for the gun I think yeah we don't need to do anything too too fancy or too special we just gotta go ahead and make sure that we've got that uh, barrel showing through with uh, its nice steel color which I think that we've got going on there just fine that will work alright so I'm gonna rinse that off and I'm actually going to move back to the dry brush that I was using and I'm going to use that for the uh, the like uh, shoulder and uh, shoulder pads and the knee pad that we've got showing. So just loading that dry brush up there like that. All right, and let's go ahead and go over those. There we go. All right, that will do just fine for that. And I think that we've got both of those shoulder pads down pretty well there. All right, that looks good. So I'm going to rinse that off. Oh, you know what? I just realized I forgot that he's got, yeah, this little thing. Uh, again, forgive me because I don't, under, I don't, I don't know Fallout lore, uh, but he's got this little thing on uh, the side of his wrist here that uh, seems to be mechanical uh, metal. So let's just go ahead and dab that uh, with this steel color as well and then we'll call it a day with that uh, with with the steel color there we go that'll do okay all right and the next up I want to move on to all of the the straps and the belts and the on all that stuff going all around everywhere so we're gonna start with some earth brown as the base for that I don't think I'm gonna need very much I think I can continue to get away with that one uh, medium uh, round brush that I was using uh, so let's continue to use it. 
And again, just all of the all of the things that look like straps, that look like belts, that kind of thing, we're just going to go over with this earth brown color. Okay, we've got almost all the straps around his body now. Just gotta get the gloves and also the uh, the straps around his gun. As well as the butt of the gun uh, itself. And like I said, these straps kind of surrounding the gun here. Oh, I got a little cat fuzz on my brush. That's okay. All right, and I think that that will finally just about do it for all of the brown everywhere. Just around the whole miniature like that. All right, so I'm going to let that dry. But while I'm letting that dry, I am going to move on to his hair. Uh, and so what I'm going to do uh, with his hair is I'm going to start with a little bit, yeah, with a little bit of my very favorite shade of brown. This is uh, leather brown. I use this for a lot of stuff because yeah, it's just such an awesome, versatile color. You can use it for so many different things. I've, I've gushed about it in the past. I won't, I won't gush on it any more than, I've already, than I already have. Uh, so we're gonna use Leather Brown and we're gonna start with the hair. I imagine him, I don't know, I haven't had, or I haven't painted characters with uh, blonde hair before. So I thought that we would go ahead and do that uh, with this Vault Dweller here. I figured we would go ahead and uh, uh, give him some, some blonde hair. Uh, so we're going to start with this leather brown color. And we're actually going to use the same combination of colors that we used on the uh, the sort of like clothing, the, the rags, the, the uh, robe, garments, whatever, uh, that the super mutant was wearing. And I think that that will have a nice uh, color scheme going on with it. So yeah, we're starting with the leather brown. There we go, so that's a good start for his hair there. Now I'm going to let his hair dry, and while we let his hair dry, we're gonna go ahead and dry brush this leather brown over all of the earth brown that we just did. So we will move back to our dry brush, and I think that that earth brown is probably nice and dry by now. It's been a couple of minutes, and I think that that was pretty much all that we really needed. So yeah, let's just uh, uh, whip out our dry brush here, and uh, let's just go over all of the uh, all of the brown bits that we just did. And that will give a, a little bit of uh, depth, a little bit of variety uh, in those uh, in those brown colors. Yeah, already right off the bat, you can kind of see it's it's starting to to give some depth and to give some color variation. And that's what we're looking for. That's beautiful. Oh, you know what? I just realized that that strap underneath his knee there, we never actually got. If I've still got some some earth, eh, it's it's looking a little dry. Oh, do I still have some? See if we can try to get it real quick. Not really. Oh, let's just. Oh, because I that's gonna that's gonna bug me. So I'm just gonna get out a little little tiny bit more, a little tiny bit more earth brown, just a little tiny dot. Yep. Don't need very much at all, and I'm just going to poke, poke that little strap down there. There we go with that earth brown. There we go, that'll do. Okay, rinse that off really quickly. All right, and then we'll go back to what we were just doing. Okay. While that dries, let's go ahead and do uh, the stuff on his back here. There we go, now we've got some depth going on with all of those straps. Yeah, that's a, that's a nice color scheme there. That's looking pretty solid. I'm pretty happy with that. 
Okay. Let's uh, let's just real quickly too. It looks like some of the uh, the brown kind of faded off of his uh, hair there while I was uh, moving him around and stuff. I probably had my finger on uh, the top of his head without really thinking about it, without really knowing it. There we go. That's good. Okay. Uh, and I'll let that dry for a little bit. Hey, tell you what, though. While that is drying, um, I noticed that he's got some, um, oh, like uh, some, some little tiny, you can kind of see, uh, like little buttons, little studs on his little back pouches right there. Um, rather than use gold, let's just continue to use uh, that honed steel color that we were using earlier. Let's just use a little tiny bit of that. I don't think I'm going to need very much. I'm just going to put a little dot right there. Um, let's move on to... Let's use our little itty bitty tiny detail, tiny uh, micro detail brush here just for safety. I don't think you're going to need it. You can probably get away with using a normal small sized brush, but I'm going to go ahead and use this brush just for safety. And it's also not even a huge deal if you decide not to go over this. It's just kind of something that I'm doing on my own time here. I think that if you leave it the way that it was just now, I think that that would be fine. But ultimately, it's also your miniature, so you can do whatever you want with them. That's the beautiful thing about painting miniatures. They are only what you decide you want them to be. I'm touching up this little knee pad here, too. And I imagine the, uh, the top of that hair is uh, probably nice and dry now. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to move on to... Uh, let me shake this bottle up. Do, 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 do. All right. I'm going to move on to this, uh, this golden blonde color. Just a nice kind of sandy uh, blonde color. Just going to use that to dry brush the hair. All right. So I'm going to move back to my dry brush. Load up some, some of this golden blonde color onto my dry brush. Just a little bit. There we go. That's looking pretty good. All right, and let's just go over his hair. It's probably not going to take very long, probably just a, a quick second or two. Yeah, there we go. I really like dry brushing like this for, for all of my different things, uh, for pretty much everything, just because it's, it's a really simple thing to do. You don't need to worry about... Um, you know, buying a bunch of different colors of washes and varnishes and all that stuff. If you're just a, a, a really good, careful um, dry brush painter, all you need is just a good set of brushes. You just basically buy the or, <laughs> good set of paints. All you basically do is just buy the, the colors that you like paint wise, uh, and then you can just use dry brushing techniques um, to do pretty much whatever you want. Yeah, there we go. He's, he's got some nice blonde hair there. That looks pretty great. I like that. Yeah, he's actually looking quite a bit like the, um, like the, the, the vault boy, the, the cartoony, kind of like 1960s vault boy. That's, that's really what he's looking like. You know, now that I'm looking at him, we're actually almost done. Yeah, we really don't have a lot of else to do at all. Yeah, all we're really going to worry about right now are his eyes. So I'm going to take out some pure white, and I'm going to use that for the whites of his eyes. So I'm just going to dab that right there. I think that that blue color that I've got right there is nice and dry, so I don't think that that's going to matter. All right, I'll move on to my little itty-bitty tiny detail, uh, micro detail brush. Just going to poke the tip of my brush a little bit in there, and just really carefully do one of those. There we go, that's one eye. And we'll go ahead and do the other. And again, I really want to stress that you do not have to do the eyes like this. If you want, like if you're just, if you don't want to mess with it, you, you don't have to. Your miniature will definitely still look good, uh, whether you decide to do this or not. Uh, so if, if, you, if you decide that you don't want to bother with the eyes, just go ahead and do... Um, you know, that, uh, that, that fair shadow that we did earlier, and then that fair highlight, and I think that that will do you just fine uh, over, over the whole face, eyes and all. And I think you'll be all right. Okay, there we go. You know what, I, I ended up kind of like going over the, that black line just a little bit. Not a huge deal. Using that same brush, I can probably just really, really lightly dab a little bit of a black line around that. So now I'm gonna go back to uh, my pure black. 
And I'm just gonna get, you know what, actually, just to save some paint, uh, because I want to do something with those boots, too. I kind of want to do, like, a semi-gloss uh, black for those boots. So I'm going to move on to uh, a, a game color brand here. This is Negro Black. Uh, the reason why I like this brand is because it's got just a little bit of a, of a gloss to it. Not full gloss. It's not a full gloss color, but it's just, like, sort of a semi-gloss, which is really, really nice for sort of, like, shined leather boots, which is uh, the kind of thing that I like to paint a lot for, for miniatures like this. But we'll use this for the eyes first. So I'm going to go back to that little itty bitty micro detail brush and I'm just going to poke a little bit on the end of that brush and I'm just going to poke some pupils onto there. Oh, that was that might have been a little bit too much, but that's okay. That'll be fine. He's kind of looking he's kind of looking to his left a little bit. So let's That right about there. Yeah, he's a little he's a little derpy. He's a little derpy eyed. But that's okay. I think that that will do just fine. We're gonna leave that just the way that it is. Alright, I'm gonna rinse that brush off, and then I'm gonna move on to uh, back to my medium brush here, and I'm gonna cover the boots, and then I'm gonna call it with this guy. I think that that will uh, work out just fine. Let's just give his boots a little bit of a little bit of a glossy look to it. It's, it's like he's coming straight out of the bunker, straight out of uh, the vault. Um, so he's so he's nice and, and and dressed up, nice and decked out. And we're gonna use this uh, semi-gloss black. You can use any brand that you want, though. You know, just kind of whatever whatever brand of colors that uh, that you want. There we go. He's got a nice uh, glossy black color on his boots there. It looks like he's got a nice spit shine. And honestly, you know, with that, I think that I'm going to go ahead and call it. I think that that looks pretty solid. It's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be, to be honest. Just He just has to be functional. Whatever you feel like is the best... Uh, that's what is best. So, uh, yeah, I, I, like I said, I'm going to call it right there. So thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, that's it for the Fallout board game. I think I'm going to move on to uh, doing some more Mansions of Madness miniatures because I've done a few of those for the channel. Uh, I'll try to do some more, like, painting stuff. And, uh, you know, if you like to see more of that kind of stuff, and if you want to see nerdy hobby stuff and board game stuff and video game things, especially about, uh, like, id titles, like Doom and that kind of stuff, because, like I said earlier, I'm very, very fond of that whole... Uh, dynamic, that whole shtick, that franchise, uh, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. You know, whatever you want to do. I'm not your mom. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to tell you what to do. But uh, thank you again, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time on Let's Paint the Mini.